In this chapter, we'll learn how to join together data from two tables. Like always, we'll start with an R Markdown file and load the Tidyverse library. We'll be using functions from the dplyr library inside the Tidyverse. The first thing we need to do is to create some small data tables. We're going to create one called subject using the tibble function. Now subject will tell us their IDs. Their IDs will just be one through five. Their gender, and this will be a vector. We'll just give them one or two letter abbreviations. If some missing values, and their age, and this will be a vector of integers. There will also be some missing values here. Okay, so here's our table of subjects with the three columns. We're also going to create a table of experimental data. So each of our subjects will have participated in some experiment. Some subjects complete the experiment more than once. There's some subjects from our subject table that are missing from this table. And there might be some subjects who are in this table but not in our subject table. So let's add some IDs. Two, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, and seven. And some scores on whatever this experiment is. run that and look at our experiment table. Now I'm going to show you several mutating joins that can let us put these two tables together. Okay, the mutating joins act like the mutate function in that they add new columns to one table based on values in another table. The first mutating join that we're going to learn about is called a left join. So the left join function is just left underscore or join. And it takes at least two arguments, x and y. x is our left table, the sort of main table that we want to build upon. So let's start with our subject table. And then y is our right table, the table we want to add to the main left table. So this will be our experiment table. If we just run this function, this gives us our um, five IDs from the left table, the gender and age information from the left table, the subject table, and their scores from the right table if they have scores. Since subjects four and five had two scores each in the right table, they're duplicated in this table. You also see that we have a message here. It says joining by ID. What that means is that the ID column is used to match up rows from the left table with rows from the right table. It's best practice to set this yourself. You won't get the warning message then. Now, if we swap the orders of the table, something slightly different will happen. Remember, our left table, the x table, is our main table. We get all the rows from this table, and then we join on rows that match from the right table. So if we switch the order, we'll get something different. Here we get ID and score from the left table, and then the matching information about gender and age from the right subject table. Now another type of mutating join is called a right join. And just like the name suggests, it does really the same as a left join but in the reverse order. 
So we can set the x table to subject and the y table to experiment. Let's set by ID. Really the main difference between right join with subject and experiment and left join with experiment and subject is the order of um, the resulting columns. Now, we usually use left joins. Most people think about their um, data joins as the first table is the main table and data from the second table are added onto it. Here, this reverses that. The second table is the main table and data from the first table are added onto it. If you're using data in a pipeline with pipes, right join might make things easier for you to do. Um, but for the most part, you'll only see left joins and you can do the same thing as a right join. The third type of mutating join is called an inner join. An inner join returns all the rows that have a match in the other table. Now, usually people don't actually type the names of the arguments X and Y. They just put the left and right tables in. Okay. So here we exclude ID 1 because it isn't in the experiment table. So we only keep IDs 2, 3, 4, and 5 because they're the only IDs that are in both tables. And then you get all of the information from the matching rows. So an inner join can exclude anybody who isn't in both tables. Now the last type of mutating join is called a full join. A full join lets you join up rows in two tables while keeping all of the information from both tables. It's sort of the opposite of an inner join, which only keeps matching data. Here we keep absolutely all of the data. Okay. So here, ID1 doesn't have any entry in the experiment table, so its experiment score is NA. Um, IDs 6 and 7 don't have any data in the subject table, so we get NA for their gender and age. But we have all of the rows, and anytime there's a matching ID, we get um, all of the information in that row. If the matching ID is in the tables more than once, then you'll get more than one row copying the information from the table where that's only once. Now this can get a little bit tricky. If you have um, the same ID, three times in the left table and three times in the right table, you'll end up with nine rows for ID3, every possible combination of the three rows from the left table with the three rows from the right table. Um, so just be on the lookout for that if your data are structured that way. You might need to join them by something more than just the ID. Let's say you had ID and um, date. If participants did something on different dates, then you could set by to a vector of ID and date. Now that's not how this um, data table is set up, but this is one way you can join tables on more than one column.